Hello. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to use the make a list strategy to solve problems with common factors. Just to review some basic vocabulary, a factor is any number multiplied by another number that makes a product. Or we could say a factor times a factor equals a product. Here's some examples here. 4 times 2 equals 8. 4 and 2 are factors of 8. 25 times 3 equals 75. 25 and 3 are two of the factors of 75. And 1 times 9 equals 9. 1 and 9 are two of the factors of the number 9. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to make a list of find the common factors of 8 and 12. What you want to do is first make a list of the factors of your first number, 8. So one way, and we'll start by writing the number 8 here, I want to think what are all the ways to multiply and get the number 8? Well one way is to multiply 1 times 8. I always want to try 1 times the number first. Another way to multiply and make 8, I know that it's an even number, so I can multiply 2 times a number. In this case, 2 times 4 equals 8. And I'm going to list these factors now in order. Just kind of show them over on the side here. The factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. It can be helpful to write the factors in order later when you're finding common factors between this number and another. So it's a good idea to write them in order. Let's go to our other number here. The number is 12. Let's go ahead and do this one in a different color here. Hope you can see this one. 12. Ah, oh, that looks pretty good. 12. Well, I always want to try 1 times that number. 1 times 12. That's one way to make 12. 12 is an even number, so I know I can multiply 2 times something. 2 times 6 equals 12. Now for 3, if I know my times tables, I know 3 times 4 equals 12. Or I know that if you add 2 plus 1, that equals 3. And that's a multiple of 3. So I know I can do 3 times a number. In this case, it's 3 times 4. And so the factors of 12, let's put them all in uh, order from least to greatest. 1, 2, 3, 4, don't run out of room, 6, and 12. So those are the factors of 12. Finally, and I'm going to use a different color for this, um, what I need to do, since I've listed all the factors of 8, and I've listed the factors of 12, I need to circle the ones that are in common. So here's my list of, eight, of factors of 8, my list of factors of 12, and I see that they both have a 1. So they have a 1 in common. I'll go ahead and circle that. And they're both even numbers. They both had a 2 in common. And if you look closely, you'll see the other number they had in common. That's right, it's 4. They have the number 4 in common. So, the common factors of 8 and 12 are 1, 2, and 4. Let's try another problem. Um, this time with 3 factors. And instead of writing the list of factors left to right and horizontally, as I did in the last example, I'm going to write them vertically, just to show you another way that you could possibly do this. So the first number I need the factors of is the number 24. And I'll put a line right there. 24. Well, I always want to try 1 times a number. I'm going to write 1 and 24. I'm going to make a big list, so I'm going to write it, leave them some space for my other factors. 24 is an even number, so that means 2 is a factor. But 2 times what? 2 times 12. What about 3? Well, I can count by 3's and get to 24. That's 3 times 8. Running, really running out of space here. And 24 can also be made by 4 times 6. And let's see what I'll do here. 4 and 6. We'll just have to read that down as a list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. Try to leave some more space on the next number. Let's take the number 30. Let me list all the factors for the number 30. Of course, 1 and 30. What about 2? Is 2 a factor of 30? Well, it is even, so I know 2 has got to be a factor. But 2 times what? 2 times 10 gets me up to 20. 
I know 2 times 12 is 24, so I have to be a little higher. But 24, and I count by twos three more times, 26, 28, 30, that gets me to 30. So it's actually 15. 2 times 15 gets me to 30. 3 times any number? Sure, 3 times 10. 4 times any number? Now, if I count by fours, I'll get to 28 and then to 32, but I'll skip right over 30. What about five times any number? Well, it does end in a zero, so I know five is a factor of this number. 30 is equal to five times six. And those are all the factors of 30. Finally, you want to find the factors of the last number, 36. I'll leave myself a lot of room here on this one. 36. What's the first one we want to try? Of course, 1 and 36. Then I want to see if 2 is a factor. Is it even? It ends in a 6. Sure is. 2 times 18. Okay. Now if you don't, if you get to a point here, you know 2 is a factor, but you're not sure what the matching factor is in the factor pair, you could always do long division over here on the side. And you could figure it out. 36 divided by 2. Three tens divided by two groups. Each group gets one. One times uh, one ten times two groups is two tens. Got one ten left. Bring down my six ones. Sixteen ones divided by two groups. Each group's going to get eight. And you can see I've shared all of them. And this number eighteen. So if you did not know that two times eighteen equals thirty six, you can do long division and figure it out that way. I'm going to go a little faster on these next ones. 3 times any number. Yeah, this is a multiple of 3. It's 3 times 12. And 4 and 9 also. And that's just a times tables. 4 times 9. Anything else? There's actually one more way, and it's not 5 times any number. It's 6 times itself. 6 times 6. So I'm just going to go ahead and write a 6. I don't need to write 6 and another 6. That would just be redundant. I need to repeat it. So look at all my factors here. I've got all my factors. I use my divisibility rules to figure them out. And finally, what I'd like to do, let me pick a different color here. I want to circle the ones they have in common. Let's circle here. We've got one. What else do we got? Two. It always helps to do them in order. And see, it's nice and neat. Three. They have three in common. I have to be careful on 4, because this is where I got messed up last time. 4. I see a 4 is a factor of 24 and a factor of 36, but 4 is not a factor of 30, so I cannot circle 4 as a common factor. I can't circle 5, but hey, I can circle 6. Each group has a 6. How about 8? No. 9? Not every group. 10? No. 12? Nope, and actually there are no other common factors. So the common factors are the ones that I've circled in purple here. The common factors of 24, 30, and 36 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Those are the common, ooh, common factors. And you might say, that's great. Well, I can figure out how to do that if I just have to make a list and it tells me what to do. But what about if it's in a word problem? What kind of word problem, what kind of real-world situation calls for someone to use common factors? Well, let's take a look. Here's an example. Now, as I read, I'm going to be marking the text. That's a term I use with the students often. Marking the text means, basically, you're circling important information, underlining the question. You're doing some active, close reading, and you're making notes of all the information you're gaining from the question. Let's read this. Gina's homework assignment was to find all the common factors of 24 and 36. Well, that's pretty easy instructions right there. It even says common factors. Now I know what kind of problem it is. And my numbers are 24 and 36. So Gina made a list. Well, that's what we did. We made a list. And you can do that to solve this problem, too. She made a list of all the factors of 24 and 36. You know, get the rest of that. That's telling us that's what we need to do. We need to make a list of all the factors of 24 and 36. 
Let's see what Gina did next. She used the list to find the factors the two numbers had in common, and which is what we did on the previous pages. Here's the question. Which list shows the common factors that Gina found? So this is a multiple choice question. They've already got the options there for you. What you're going to want to go ahead and do is write the number 24 and the number 36 and you want to write all the factors of each number and circle the ones that are in common. Let's do this one together. You can try the next one on your own. I'm going to go a little faster this time. 1 and 24, since we've done these, some of these numbers. 2 times 12. 3 times 8. 4 times 6. Let's try 36 now. 1 and 36. 2 and 18. Remember from that last one? 3 times 12. 4 times 9. And I ran out of space here, but I know I can do 6 times 6. I'll write the 6 on the side. Now I'll just pick another color. What do we do with the ones that are in common? That's right, we circle them. 1, 2, 3, Four, oh my goodness, six, eight, whoa, not eight, and not nine. There's only one more they have in common. That's right, it's 12. The common factors are one, two, three, four, six, and 12. Look at the options. One, two, three, four, six, and 12. I know my correct answer is going to be C. All right. Now you might be thinking, well, that problem involved someone making a list, and that's kind of just the same thing that we were doing before, making a list. They just added her number or her name, and she was doing a homework assignment. But what's a real-world problem that would involve this situation? Let's take a look at the next situation. Miles has a train collection with 36 engines, 72 boxcars, and 18 cabooses. Let's go ahead and circle what he has. He's got these different parts of trains. You see the repeated number, like the numbers we were making lists of. He wants to arrange. This is key. He wants to arrange. That means he wants to be able to put them in a rectangle, in an array. If you remember from the first couple lessons, chapter 5, lesson 1, and lesson 2, if a number, to find factors of a number, you can put them in an array or in a rectangle. He wants to arrange these cars in equal rows with only one type of train in each row. Each type, each one, excuse me, one type of train car. How many can he put in each row? That means he wants to put all of the engines in an array all of the boxcars in an array by themselves, and all of the cabooses in, a, in an array. He's not combining all of these parts. No, he's putting an array, only one type in each row. So what he likes to do, he wants to put them in there each row, and then he'll put them together at the end. But the question is, what are the common factors of these three numbers to know how many can go in each row? If you're going to make a big rectangle, with all of these pieces together, but you want to keep the same type in each row, you have to find the common factors between them. So you're going to want to write, say, the number 36, 72, and 18. And then what you want to do is you'll find the com write all the factors and circle the ones they have in common. Now, what I'd suggest you do right now, pause the video. Try to figure this one out You're on your own. Might use your computer or use pencil or paper or whatever you're viewing this on. Write the factors out and then give it a try. See which one has the common factors. I'm going to go ahead now and show you a couple more examples you can do on your own. This is another problem that you can read on your own and you can try to find the common factors for. If you'd like to solve it, you can just pause the video here See if you can get the right answer. Maybe bring it into class. Let me know what you got. And there's a fourth example for you. 
This one's about stickers. So if you'd like to try this one, pause that video, get your pencil and paper, make your list, and circle the common factors. And if you're really looking for more fun, you can find, here are some other problems you can practice, make a list to find the common factors of these numbers too. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember, use your divisibility rules when thinking of factors. Make your lists and circle the factors that they have in common.